Among the many unique aspects of Carnatic music is accompaniment. Now accompaniment itself is not unique to Carnatic music, but the kind of accompaniment that we find in Carnatic music is certainly unique. All kinds of music, all genres of music are described as, uh, are described in terms of one or more lead performers with some accompaniment. So if you have say a film song, you would have one or two playback singers with a whole orchestra that accompanies them. Folk music again, you will have one or two or a group of lead performers and uh, you will have accompaniment, percussive, melodic. Um, in uh, classical music, western classical music, you have pieces that are meant for one or two instruments with another instrument accompanying it. So what is um, accompaniment? This literally it is to accompany the lead performer. And uh, in Carnatic music, uh, you would have seen that we have a lead performer, either a vocalist or a veena player or a violinist or, uh, or a flute player and so on. And the lead performer is always seated in the center and the accompanists are seated on the sides. We have, uh, we have percussive accompaniment, we have melodic accompaniment. These are the two kinds of accompaniment that we have in Carnatic music. Now what is unique about this is that um, this accompaniment involves a great deal of, it entirely hinges around um, the shared tradition, knowledge of a shared tradition and a great deal of anticipation and alertness during the concert. That is, there is rarely if ever any rehearsal the lead performer and the accompanist almost never get together to rehearse for a particular concert. They may jam together on other occasions, but a given concert, um, it is very rare that, in fact, the, uh, the more seasoned performers never need a rehearsal, they do not rehearse together. Nor is there obviously, nor is there any written score that uh, the performers can follow. So the, the performers meet on stage and create music. Now how is this possible? Because as I said of two things, one is the main thing is of course the shared tradition. Um, while the melodic accompanist, the melodic accompanist is also expected to have uh, internalized many compositions. Quite often in a concert, the lead performer may perform a composition that the melodic accompanist has never heard of. In the case of um, today in Carnatic music, the melodic accompaniment is always, almost always the violin and uh, the, the, suppose we have a vocal concert, the singer may sing a composition that the violinist has probably not even heard and the violinist is expected to accompany the vocalist. And then we of course have the Manodharma aspect, the Kalpana Sangeetam or the, improvis the improvisation in which the violin is again expected to accompany. Now how does this happen? Because as I said you have a shared tradition. You have uh, trained uh, in this system of music and uh, you have heard so many concerts and you are able to anticipate. Violin as, uh, as an instrument is, uh, was adapted into Carnatic music sometime in the 19th century. It is uh, said that um, Muthuswami Dikshidhar's brother, Baliswami Dikshidhar, 
was a pioneer and uh, he tried to play Carnatic music on the violin. So also Vedivelu of the Tanjore Quartet that I have mentioned, he, he too uh, played Carnatic music on the violin and uh, soon it uh, caught on and uh, today a Carnatic concert is almost inconceivable without the violin. There was a time and even today there are experiments with other kinds of accompaniment, very rare of course, but these experiments do happen and uh, Veena used to be uh, an accompanying instrument and in many respects it is, uh, it, it would give a very different musical experience. The experience of Carnatic music, how we feel, how we experience Carnatic music is to a large extent determined by the nature of the accompaniment, the, the both the melodic and the percussive accompaniment determine the Carnatic experience to a large extent. So we have the melodic accompaniment and percussive accompaniment. Sometimes on stage you, all, you may also see some, uh, especially when you have a senior performer, uh, you may see one or two other people accompanying the performer, the singer, and most likely his students who lend support. Well, that is another kind of accompaniment, but uh, it does not really uh, contribute much to the concert as a whole. It, it is just supportive of the uh, lead performer. And of course, you always have the tambura accompaniment, the somebody playing the tambura, though it seems a very uh, simple matter. Physically, it is very taxing to sit and play the tambura or the tambura for two hours or two and a half hours. And uh, it does involve some technique and uh, training to be able to play the tam tambura properly, so that the right kind of atmosphere is created. So today we will, uh, we are focusing on the melodic and percussive uh, accompaniment in Carnatic music. Melodic accompaniment as I said is almost always the violin. Now what does the violinist do by way of accompanying? When we talk of the two aspects of Carnatic music, Kalpita and Kalpana, when the lead performer is uh, performing a uh, a composition, the violinist is expected to follow. If the violinist knows the composition well and good, uh, and even if he knows the composition, there, are, there is very likely some subtle minute differences between the way uh, the violinist knows the composition and the way the lead performer knows it. So all this uh, has to be factored in when the violinist has to be all the time on his toes. See, the violinist has to be very alert, anticipating, uh, very listening very keenly to what, listen, listen, not just listening, he has to also be observing. So you see in a concert, the violinist and the uh, percussion, the mridangam artist, they are not just playing, they are all the time looking at the uh, lead performer. And uh, when it comes to kal Kalpana Sangeetam, improvisation, suppose it is an alapana, again the, again the violinist follows, here obviously it is going to be very difficult because you can't, you won't really know what the uh, singer, let us say the lead performer is a singer, there is no way of knowing exactly what the singer is going to sing. But given that it is this particular raga, the violinist will know what the raga is and how it goes, uh, how exactly the phrases are going to be formed, how they are going to be delivered, that is where improvisation lies and uh, uh, the violinist has a tough job on hand. But it is they accompany in any case and uh, at least the, the tail end of the phrases are uh, usually performed. There are gaps between phrases in an alapana. Those are softly filled in by the violinist 
with the tail end of the uh, vocalist phrases. If you listen carefully, you will know what I am talking about. Um, and uh, in Carnatic music, the Manodharma aspects, whatever Manodharma or improvisation the lead performer uh, engages in, the violinist responds, if not equally at least to a measured level. So, if the vocalist performs an alapana, uh, the violinist accompanies him through the alapana and then after the vocalist has finished his alapana, the violinist will give a solo presentation of that raga. He will also perform an alapana. Now, this is the way, uh, this is the role of the accompanist. It is pretty well defined in Carnatic music where the, the violinist has to come in, where the mridangam player comes in, what they are their solo segments, there, there are uh, very fairly clear conventions regarding these. Unlike for instance, uh, Hindustani music, where it is entirely up to the lead performer to, uh, to determine when the accompanists could have their own solo forays. So, uh, the violinist responds with his or her alapana. So, also with uh, the other segments of other aspects of Manodharma. The violinist, suppose the singer performs Swara Prastara, another aspect of Manodharma, the violinist will respond. So, in these areas, especially of Manodharma and especially uh, of Swara Prastara and Naraval, the violinist, uh, the violinist contribution is not just to follow and to respond, but to actually provoke the lead singer on and the lead singer will in turn provoke the uh, violinist and this kind of uh, interaction and prodding happens all the time in Carnatic music. In fact, the level of interaction in Carnatic music among the performers on stage is of a very high order. Since nothing almost is completely determined, even compositions there is a fair, there is a very real uncertainty about how exactly they will be presented by the lead performer. So, there has to be a great deal of anticipation and interaction among the performers. And that is also what makes uh, Carnatic music a very live and uh, a very live and sometimes raw uh, uh, experience. In the sense, as I said, the violin cannot entirely anticipate and completely accurately anticipate what the the lead performer is going to sing, and yet they are, they do accompany and um, some. Uh, level, sometimes there is a rough edgedness to it, to the music, which uh, Kenoshias we learn to overlook that kind of rough edgedness. That is part of the uh, musical experience, that is part of the creation of music that happens in Carnatic music. Of course, um, if uh, a violinist has uh, performed very often with a particular vocalist, they would more or less know the style of that vocalist and uh, they would be able to respond, they would be able to follow more accurately. But there is never, uh, it is never the case that everything is perfectly in place. Now, as I said, there are well understood and widely accepted conventions regarding how the, uh, regarding the role of the violinist or the Mridangam player. This is called the Kacheri Dharma, the some principles that are uh, that are to be abided by in a concert. So, um, if the let us say the vocalist performs an alapana in a particular raga, it is expected that the violinist will respond with the same raga. Um, and uh, 
the violinist should try to complement the vocalist's performance. It cannot be completely divergent and uh, in a completely different style or completely different speed. There has to be an attempt to maintain the overall coherence of the performance. So if the vocalist has sung uh, say Raga Bhairavi and use, using mostly softer phrases and uh, more uh, leisurely treatment of Bhairavi. Suppose this is what the vocalist has presented, then the violinist should try to keep to that style, keep to that layer um, and so on. Because see in a, in a musical presentation like a Carnatic music presentation where uh, there is nothing written, there are no written scores, there has to be somebody who has to take lead and that is the lead performer, the singer or the or one instrumentalist, he or she takes the lead and the others have to join in. That is only, that, that alone can make for a coherent musical experience. So the, if the, again in terms of uh, duration, if the, the vocalist has sung for say 10 minutes and I'll happen after 10 minutes, the violinist typically plays for 6 or 7 minutes, never exceeding 10 definitely. And that is seen as inappropriate. Um, again, uh, Swara Prastara again, if the vocalist is performing Swara Prastara at a certain region of the raga, then the violinist also generally confines herself to that region. So the violinist's role is to uh, be very keenly aware of the vocalist style and what the vocalist is doing, all in the larger interest of the coherence of the presentation. If everybody on stage was doing his or her own thing, then the experience of the concert will be uh, difficult to absorb.